So, um, good morning, everybody. Welcome to St. James's Church. Um, I'm going to hand over to Tony, and I'm just in charge of the computer today, which gives me a bit of a sense of relief um, after a few weeks of trying to struggle to do two things at once. So I'm going to hand over to Tony, who's going to lead us on this Passion Sunday. Right, well, good morning, everybody, and to all those that are viewing us uh, at a different time on YouTube or whatever means. So, uh, yes, as Lu Lucy has said, this is um, Passion Sunday. And uh, in one sense, it provides the opportunity to look, if you like, through a telescope at all of the events of the Passion Tide. And um, before we sort of go to the particular commemorations of uh, of Holy Week starting next week. So our focus is very much on the passion story, the whole story, if you like, of Jesus' arrest, death, resurrection, and all the events leading up to that. So we're going to just begin with um, some words that are taken from Corinthians and Galatians. They're on the service sheet. Please ignore the, um, uh, the the way in which it's been printed to differentiate. We, we please say all the words to if you want to. Um, it's normally said as a responsory, but uh, um, the idea was that we can all say this together. So we begin this morning. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. We preach Christ crucified, the power of God and the wisdom of God. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Come, now is the time to worship. John's going to lead us. a time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before Now 
is a time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come, come, come. John. And so we come in our service as we usually do to remember that we have a forgiving God who invites us constantly back into relationship with him as we recognize our own weaknesses and failings and our desire to put them right. 1 John chapter 1 verses 7 to 9 remind us of this and are often quoted in services. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. His words remind us that God's work is to wash us clean. So a short prayer, the preparation, using some words from Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O Lord. You will not despise. And so using some more words based on Psalm 51, we admit to God the sin which is always before us. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so, as we have prayed, may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. John's going to lead us in our next song, which has the sense of being very much a personal reflection, which I think we can all join in with as we reflect on the cross of Christ.
Now you are exalted to the highest place, King of the heavens, where one day I'll bow. But for now, I marvel at this saving grace, and I'm full of praise once again. I'm full of praise once again. And once again I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy, and I'm broken inside. Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, my friend. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, my friend. And once again I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy, and I'm broken inside. Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life. Thank you, John. Um, so we now go over to uh, Roger for our first reading. Our first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 31 beginning to read at verse 31. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we go back over to John um, for our song, The Lord's My Shepherd. my shepherd I'll not want he makes me lie in pastures green he leads me by the still still waters his goodness restores my soul and I will trust in you alone and I will trust in you for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will lead me home. He guides my ways in righteousness, and he anoints my head with oil, and my cup it overflows with joy. I feast on his pure delight. And I will trust in you alone, and I will trust in you alone, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will lead me home, and though I walk the darkest path, I will not fear the evil one. For you are with me and your rod and 
And so back over to Roger and Margaret. Margaret, for our second reading. Thank you. You need to unmute, Margaret. Our Gospel reading this morning is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 12. Jesus predicts his death. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my, my servant also will be, will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said, it had thundered. Others said, an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. But I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. This is the world of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Margaret. And so I'm going to hand over to Bryony now to speak to us. And uh, thank you, Bryony. Thank you. A moment of quiet. Father, may my words and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our great Redeemer. Amen. The story is told of a group of rabbis in Auschwitz who were discussing together whether or not God really existed. They doubted God's existence because they couldn't see how a God of love could possibly allow such appalling tragedies to happen to his chosen people. They searched the Jewish scriptures to find out whether in the light of their circumstances, God existed. And in the end, they came reluctantly to the conclusion that God couldn't possibly exist. What shall we do now? asked one of the rabbis. The answer was swift and was taken for granted by them all. Why? Pray, of course. 
as a curate, I will never forget going up on the underground to Great Ormond Street Hospital in central London one day with my rector to be with a family when the doctors turned off the life support machines for their daughter, one of our church youngsters, and who less than a year before I had prepared for confirmation. She died of a form of leukemia at the age of 13. And it was a terrible time for everyone in the parish. And as you can imagine, raised all sorts of difficult questions. One question of course was, how could God allow that to happen? Jenny was a lovely girl, a member of the church choir, active in the guides and in junior church. Her whole family, mom and dad, younger brother, were all regular members of the church. Mum being a Sunday school teacher and dad a leading light in the stewardship committee. Many people assume that if you're a Christian and you worship and follow God, then he repays you by making sure that nothing bad happens to you. But it doesn't work like that. For a start, God doesn't owe us anything. Any response we make to him is precisely that, a response to his great love for us. And nothing we could ever do could come anywhere close to matching God's huge love for us and the immense wealth he has poured upon his world in so many ways. And Christianity has never been an insurance policy. God sends the rain and the sun on the good and the bad alike. We all have good times in life and we all have bad times in life. And all of that goes together to make life's rich pattern. And of course, if you've been taking part in this year's Lent course, you'll know that we've been watching and hearing about some pretty harrowing stories of things that have happened to Christians. What God does give Christians is the assurance that he knows what we're going through because he has experienced it himself. When God himself was on earth in the person of Jesus, he experienced all our emotions from the very best to the very worst. And in today's reading from John's Gospel, we're told that Jesus was troubled in his soul. When bad things happen in my life, I'm likely to find myself pleading with God, God, please stop this happening to me. Please make everything all right again. But there may be no immediate response. It may be some time before things do get better again. And I may have to suffer worse pain before that happens. And when talking with youngsters about how God answers prayers, I describe it like waiting at traffic lights. You know, red, no, amber, not yet, wait. And actually that's almost harder. And green for yes. And although it sounds simplistic, that's really how it's been for me all through my life. I've known that God answers my prayers, but sometimes I've had to wait and sometimes it's been no. So it's comforting to know that Jesus went through exactly the same routine. God, this is awful. Please stop this happening to me, Jesus prayed. But it didn't stop. And the process continued with worse pain for Jesus. In the Garden of Gethsemane on the night before he died, he spent the whole night in prayer, but still it wasn't over for him. And he had to endure the physical agony of crucifixion, the most awful and painful of deaths, and the emotional and spiritual agony of believing that God himself had abandoned him. John is a theological writer and so he makes sense of God's refusal to remove Jesus from suffering or suffering from Jesus by having Jesus say in today's reading, Father, glorify your name. And in response, a voice came from heaven. 
I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. But Jesus appears to be the only one who actually heard the voice. The crowd heard something but couldn't identify what it was. Some people heard what they thought might have been a rumble of thunder and others perhaps noticing Jesus' radiant face when he spoke with God or, or listened to God, concluded an angel had spoken to Jesus. Theologians have struggled for years and years to find proof of God's existence. But there are no proofs. There are no voices from heaven which we all hear at the same time. Angels may have been seen occasionally by large numbers of people, such as the Angel of Mons, the supernatural entity who protected the British Army from defeat by the invading forces of the German Empire at the beginning of the First World War. But such appearances are few and far between, and the majority of us will go through life without ever seeing an angel. Prayers are sometimes answered in the way which we expect, but very often they're answered in a totally different way. And sometimes, like the crowd, we fail to identify God's voice and so we miss the answer completely. When things go wrong, God doesn't usually lean down from heaven and put it right for us, though occasionally that might happen. So how do we know that God exists? If he may not put things right that have gone wrong, what's the point of prayer? I think those are the sort of questions that John addresses in his gospel, although the language and construction of thought is so very different from our own, that it's sometimes difficult to sort out exactly what is being said. All the way through, the gospel give hints of the answer. John calls those hints signs of glory. But the final answer comes right at the end of the gospel with the resurrection. After the darkness and the pain and the crucifixion comes resurrection. And that's a pattern repeated again and again in human life today. After the dark times, things get better. And for Christians who are able to grow through the dark times, things not only improve, but can even be better than they were before. And even that's only part of the answer. For now we see in a glass darkly, and it isn't until after death we shall see clearly the full glory of resurrection. But nonetheless, we can experience immense and amazing resurrection in this life if we're able to relate and trust the God within. And that's what John is talking about in this passage when he refers to the glory of God. Father, glorify your name, says Jesus. And God's answer, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. So how do we know God exists? We know by personal experience. We know because in the difficult times there is someone to cling on to, someone who is there supporting us, someone who is guiding us through to glory on the other side of darkness, someone who is giving us an opportunity to grow towards him, Someone who is always there on our side, even if things don't go the way we think they ought to go. And we know, too, by looking at Jesus. The crowd looked at Jesus and said, he's seen an angel. Jesus is now in glory and alive forever. We can see him and reach him whenever we wish, both through the pages of the Bible and through personal experience. For the God within is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus, 
the human face of God. And when we truly turn tune into Jesus, then we'll soon discover what God's glory is all about. Amen. Thank you, Bryony. And uh, as we reflect on those words and that invitation to look again, to think again about the glory of Jesus, the words of our affirmation today remind us why it is Jesus that we look to. So let us together affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And as we go over to John for our hymn, Just As I Am, Without One Plea, this is one of those classic hymns that uh, rem that we can use as a hymn of response to the words we've heard, that we can come to God just as we are, with all our failings, our questions, our doubts, and our imperfections. And we come to the Lamb of God who has taken away the sin of the world. Thank you. Over to you, John. Just as I am without one plea, but that thou blood was shed for me, and that thou bid me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am and waiting not to my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot O Lamb of God I come I come just as I am though tossed about with many a conflict many a doubt fightings within and fear Without, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am, O wretched, blind, sight rich as healing of the mind, yea, all I need in thee to find, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am, thy love unknown hath broken barrier down now to be thine yea thine alone O Lamb of God I come I come Thank you. 
And so we go over to Penny, who's going to lead us in the prayers of the church. Thank you, Penny. As we come indeed to a time of quiet and thoughtfulness after what we've been thinking about earlier, I'm sure it help, might help you some of the things that uh, Anthony said earlier. You may be listening to this uh, later in the day. So if it's a time when you've got a problem of your own that you want to talk to God about, well, feel free, just turn the sound down a bit, deal with your prayer, and then come back to us later. So let us pray together. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, at this time of Lent, there are a number of prayers to bring as we travel through the Lenten days that lead to Easter. On the first Sunday, we were reminded of our own lack of good and the way we did not do as we would have wished or the way we are sure you would not have wished us to go. So we echo the words of the psalmist, remember not my transgressions, but according to thy steadfast love, remember me. We heard of the time when Jesus was baptized by John and was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tested. Thank you, Father, for your eternal and undeserved love to us, especially in times of trial and difficulty. From pride, vanity and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred and malice, good Lord, deliver us. Almighty God, we are often like your disciples. We listen to your word, but forget or misunderstand. Thank you for the opportunities this Lent time for various courses, suitable readings, events with discussions and talks that we might extend our faith in many ways and enjoy sharing our faith and pilgrimage with others. Thank you, Father, for the ability to learn and grow in service. From sloth, worldliness and love of money, from contempt of your word and your laws, good Lord, deliver us. In our third Sunday, we celebrated the wonderful word you, world you created. In the psalmist hymn of joy to the world in which we live, and even in the works of beauty in art and architecture, we cry to you, Heavenly Father, for what has been done in ignorance or greed to your wonderful world and its creatures and its bounty. Forgive those who did not understand and followed those who did not care. From the sins of body and mind, from the deceits of the world, good Lord, deliver us. Heavenly and loving Father, Mothering Sunday is indeed a refreshment as well during Lent. But this year, of course, we know it's been tinged with longing for many to be with and care for those loved in families and elsewhere. As Jesus showed his concern for his mother's future, thank you for so much done by so many with love. Grant your abiding love for care in trying times. Forgive us, Father, for we are often forgetful of those who, over many years, have mothered us in family, church and life. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, when death surrounds us, good Lord, deliver us. So on this Sunday, oh yes, we prepare to think with sad hearts the days coming which lead from joy to horror and then to start to look at the glories of Easter Day. But we know that this cosmic event turned the rigidity of law to the glory of grace 
in the obedience of your son. Grant us, Father, to listen to you as you teach us the way of service for you in love and joy. Walk with us in our pilgrimage, Lord, to learn and grow in faith day by day, knowing that you love us, you care for us, you are always with us, you never leave us, even when we are unaware. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Lord God, as you give yourselves to us, grant us the love to give ourselves to you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And we say together the family prayer. You might like to say the way words you already know, or the way you like it, or in your own language today, whatever is most appropriate. We say together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory, which you mentioned just now, are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Penny. So we're going to move to our final song, which is an invitation to follow Christ, to consider what that might mean. So over to John, who will lead us with, will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen? And admit to what I mean in you and you in me. Will the love with with that sorry will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around? Through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me. Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In the company I'll grow, where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. So thank you to all those who have uh, participated in the service and thank you for joining us all uh, this morning or whenever you are watching this. 
May Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve him with joy. And words from Ephesians chapter 6, right at the end. May peace be with you all and love with faith. From God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May grace be with all who love the Lord Jesus Christ with the love that he has given us. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and those whom you love and pray for now and always. Amen. So let us thank, bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.